Good evening, everyone. I have to admit that growing up in Puerto Rico, surrounded by beautiful beaches and beautiful rivers, I never really thought of water as a scarce resource. It wasn't until I started my PhD that it became obvious to me that we should all be thinking about water, um, of water as this uh, limited and precious resource. And I know this is kind of counterintuitive for some of us because we live in a blue planet, right? Surrounded by more water than land. But the available fresh water only accounts for less than 0.1% of all the total water we have on Earth. And the problem is that population growth is putting a lot of stress on those fresh water resources. And just to give you an idea of the magnitude we're talking about here, the United Nations estimates that the global urban population is growing by two people every second. And that's a lot of people we need to get water to in the, in the coming years. Um, and, as and as cities um, grow, we need to be able to ensure that we can provide sustainable access to safe drinking water to our communities. And this is a serious challenge because the water demand is going up, but the actual water avail availability is decreasing due to shrinking resources and contamination. And the water we have is the water we have. So there are two main things that we can do to try to extend our fresh water resource resources. On the one hand, we, can, we should conserve as much water as we can, and we can all be better about this. But unfortunately, conservation alone is not going to cut it because water, in the end, is an essential resource that we need to use. In the US, the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water a day. That means that on average, each of us uses enough water to fill up a pool in one month. So think about how many pools you and your family can fill up in a year. And that's a lot of water to waste. So we need to be able to harness the water we use and reuse it. And we actually live in a state that's considered one of the national leaders in water reuse. Most of you probably have seen here in Florida while you're driving around or walking around a park, signs for reclaim water. And if you're not familiar with reclaim water, it's the end product of wastewater treatment that can be used for a beneficial purpose. In a nutshell, the water that we use in our homes goes down the drain, makes it to the wastewater treatment plant where they treat it and test it. And if it passes water quality standards, then we get to use it for things like watering yards and, water and watering public areas. And we recognize that this is an important alternative water supply. So we wanted to investigate it a little further. And I am a, I'm a microbiologist, so we were very interested in looking at the viruses, figuring out which viruses are in the water. And I know I just told you that water is tested. But the problem is that traditional methods that are used for water quality purposes don't really do a good job of looking for viruses because they had some serious limitations. If you want to look for viruses, we had to go in and look for a specific virus or a specific group of closely related viruses in this sort of one-at-a-time approach. And these type of efforts largely focus on some popular human viruses that are known to be found in wastewater, but what about other viruses? And this is, ti this is time consuming and very expensive, so it's not very practical to do. Therefore, the majority of water quality monitoring programs rely on indicator bacteria because they're a lot easier to work with and um, a lot easier to monitor. And the idea is that if you detect this indicator bacteria in treated water over certain levels, that means that the water treatment might have failed to remove some potential harmful microorganisms. But in a nutshell, the problem is that we, don't really need, we didn't really know the viruses in the reclaimed water because either the tests were specific for viruses that we think are there, or they were testing for a completely different organism. Bacteria and viruses are very different, and removal of bacteria doesn't tell you much about the removal of viruses. And what we were bringing to the table with my PhD project while I was in grad school about 10 years ago, um, was this new technique that allow you to look at all the viruses in a given sample at the same time without looking at specific viruses, sort of at this one at a time approach. And we were very excited about, looking, about using this technique to look for viruses in reclaimed water. But 
This was the first time that I had to get out of my science bubble because I needed to ask for samples. So I needed to get out of my comfort zone and my lab mates and my PI because I needed to talk to people because I needed samples. I was very interested in looking at the viruses that were at the wastewater treatment plant and the viruses that, viruses that actually made it to the point of use. For example, a farm that was using reclaimed water for irrigating crops. But hey, everybody wants to know which viruses are reclaimed water, right? Yeah, until we started asking for samples. People didn't really seem interested about what we were trying to bring to the table, and we were kind of getting shut down left and right. And this is not what I was expecting at all, because here I was thinking we were coming to save the day, water quality, we're going to know which viruses are there. So the wheels start turning in my head, and it's kind of like an emotional roller coaster, right? I went from, wait, what? They, they're not interested in our technique? to sort of, you know, slowly building up, are you kidding me? They're not interested in our technique. People are the worst. You just can't, you just, they just people don't want to, don't want to improve. And in the end, towards more of a sad feeling, right? Like, it's just sad. The system we live in today is just sad, that people don't want to take advantage of technology. And I like to think that most of us go through this process when we feel that our ideas are not well received or people don't think we're awesome. <laughs> But I found that the most important thing is to come out of this roller coaster thinking about other people. So I asked myself, well, why are they they're not so excited about our technique? What's happening? Turns out that um, one of the biggest obstacles to water reuse programs is public perception. Because there is this yuck factor, right, with using water that you, just, that you send down the drain. And publicity and propaganda, like toilet to tap, don't really help. And I know it's kind of catchy, toilet to tap. But the problem is, is that deni it denies all the effort that water management, engineers, scientists, and a whole lot of people have put into this water to make it reusable. So they were dealing with that. And then here I was coming with, let's figure out which viruses are in the water. When people hear the word virus, most people think about disease, nasty diseases. But in reality, we're completely surrounded by viruses. Viruses are actually the most abundant biological entities on our planet. And most of them really couldn't care less about humans because most of them infect bacteria. And I was genuinely interested in looking at the total viral community in reclaimed water. Not necessarily human pathogens, but I knew that. They didn't know that. They saw me coming, and they said, oh, here comes another person trying to find something wrong with the water that we worked so hard to get people to accept. And as far as they knew, the water had been tested. So when I stepped back and, you know, kind of realized what was happening and why they were having that reaction, it's like, oh, I get it. I understand the reaction. I'm having my own PR problem here, and I just have to get better at explaining what we're trying to do, and that, no, we don't really know which viruses are in the water. And I'm interested in looking at all the viruses. Another important thing was that we just needed to keep talking to people. You never know who's listening. And yes, some people were still indifferent to our project, but some people thought that what we were asking was an important question, and they were interested. And those were the people that got us access to samples. So we were able to look at viruses in reclaimed water. And as expected, most of the, water, most of the viruses in the water infect bacteria, so nothing crazy there. But we found something unexpected that turned out to be sort of the highlight of our study. We found that viruses that are found in our food make it to the wastewater treatment and are found in reclaimed water. And when we saw this, we kind of zeroed in on a virus that infects peppers just because it was one of the, the most abundant virus, plant virus in our data. And if you're trying to wrap your head, uh, your head around this because you don't really eat sick peppers, probably most of you look good eating peppers, what happens is that the peppers that are used for processed foods and things like that, those might have a lot of these pepper viruses. And they're, they're used to make um, chilies and hot tosses and things like that. We consume these products and we excrete them in high concentrations. So these pepper viruses, may, makes, they make it to our GI tract. 
And then we flush them down the toilet, and they make it to the wastewater treatment plant. And they make it through the whole treatment because we find them in reclaimed water, which is treated effluent. And as you can imagine, this is a tough virus. But we looked at this and was like, hmm, this pepper virus is definitely associated with domestic wastewater. How can we use this to our advantage? So we wonder, is it possible that we detect this pepper virus in environments that receive wastewater discharges? And sure enough, our group and other groups started detecting the pepper virus in waters, in waters that have received wastewater discharges. Other groups even detected the virus in tissues from shellfish that have been grown in waters exposed to wastewater. And this is very promising because we kind of stumbled on, upon a new viral indicator. And the interesting thing is that the virus co-occurs with non-human pathogens of concern. And we say it's a promising viral indicator because we think if we detect this pepper virus over certain levels in different environmental waters, it means that the, that, that water body has received wastewater that hasn't, be, hasn't been properly treated. And we're very excited about this because our studies just started here in Florida. But now other groups have found the pepper virus in environmental waters around the world, Central America, South America, Asia, Europe, um, and South America. So we're very excited about this because our reclaimed water adventures cannot end up in a promising new tool for water quality management worldwide. And we're very excited about the possibilities of the pepper virus. And I hope um, people realize that water is precious. And I know this is kind of hard, uh, this is easy to forget because we live in a region that where water problems are very manageable, but other regions such as the Western United States and other parts of the world are not so lucky. So we need to learn to work together to meet future water demands. And this is one of many issues that face society today. We need to learn to communicate better and manage our own emotions so we can truly listen to other parties involved and come up with productive solutions. And I am an optimist, so I think more often than not, we all have good intentions. We just have to get better at listening and considering each other. Thank you.